What's up guys? How's everybody doing tonight? So, first of all, I want to thank you all for the immense support that you guys showed me when I posted my bad news video. Honestly guys, I was posting that video because I saw no other way around it. I'd shown you guys several of the animals that had passed away, and I knew that if I let it drag on and keep it on the DL, people were going to start asking questions. But what I received in return was all this kind support about what had happened. I mean, it really was heartwarming and practically made me feel emotional because frankly speaking, it really showed me through action how much of a strong community has been built here on this platform. I really, really appreciate the kindness and sincerity so many of you showed me in that video. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys four new additions to the arachnid collection. So the animals I obtained are four adorable Heterometra spinifer, otherwise commonly known as the Asian forest scorpion. There are a few other members of the same genus, but if I'm not mistaken, these ones are the spinifer species. Uh, my buddy Brayden, he obtained a female, I think even over a year ago actually, and out of nowhere she gave birth to quite a few babies. So I'd been thinking, you know, it'd be really cool to add some scorpions to the collection, show you guys some, you know, different kinds of arachnids other than just the theraphosids. And uh, what better way to do that because not only are we getting a really great beginner scorpion species? I mean, I used to keep some emperors and red clawed and other species before, but um, not only are we starting off fresh again with a beginner species, but we're not supporting wild caught. We're supporting him and his captive bred achievement. So they're going to be hardier, hopefully, and it's nice too because we have a small little group and we can set them up communally. So how about I go ahead and introduce you to one of the animals I just recently got? Oh, hey. How's it going, little buddy? Hey. For those of you that don't know, H. spinifer is one of those species that can generally be kept communally, and they do quite well communally as well. So I've set up a small little enclosure here for these animals, and we're gonna take a close look at them. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the parameters that are ideal for keeping them healthy, uh, talk a little bit about feeding, not that I think they're gonna eat for us, um, but you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll show them on my hands a little bit for you guys to take a look while I coax them into their new home. And that'll be the video. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am for these new additions. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment down below. And let's get started with this. So guys, these are the lovely H spinifers that I got. I'll see them in a moment. Hello! Here they are. Very cute, if I do say so myself. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for calling a scorpion or an arachnid cute, but hey, I think they're cute. They're pretty adorable. Now, some of you may be saying, what are you doing picking up a scorpion? Goes without saying, this species is, in terms of venom potency, quite harmless. Uh, if you have any allergy to bees, yeah, you may wanna refrain from handling Anything venomous kind of goes without saying, not to say that the venom is the same kind per se, but they're generally not very inclined to ever sting you. They mostly will use uh, mechanical force or physical force using their pincers. At this size, they don't really do anything. You know, you kind of just poke at their pedipulps or their claws here and they don't do anything. If I gently nudge the, the stinger, again, nothing. Anyway, I don't want to bug it too much, but I really wanted to emphasize that this animal is really not out to get us. So there's one of the very nice little scorpions. So here they are. So here's all four of them together. Uh, these guys were born, I believe, back in October, if, I, if my memory hasn't failed me, Brayden said. I think they were born sometime in the fall. So, you know, they're like around six months of age right now. It kind of goes to show how slow these animals grow and how much they're underappreciated. You know, you can you can pluck them out of the wild and buy one for between 15 and $20 Canadian. Um, but these, these captive breads, like when you really raise them, you see how much work goes into uh, successfully raising these animals and how much time, how much of a time investment it, it takes. So to me, I really appreciate these animals and I'm really thankful that I was able to obtain these from Brayden. But uh, yeah, there they are. I don't want to 
stress them out too much. I know I'm prodding them around. Interesting enough, you might see a few of these are very shiny looking and this one's a little duller. I'm curious if this one is, you know, thinking about molting soon, whereas these ones are more freshly molted. I could very well be wrong, but I noticed that it has a duller, rougher, less uh, vibrant exoskeleton. That could be a sign for that. They're also quite plump right now, as you can see. They've been eating very well with Brayden. He's been feeding them quite generously. So from so at this point, I think what we'll do is uh, go ahead and put these guys in their new home. And I'll do a little explaining about the parameters I'm keeping for them. And we'll see how they like it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, guys. So this is the enclosure I set up for my Asian forest scorpion babies. Now again, I'm going with a communal setup because I'd like to try and keep a group communally. This is obviously temporary until they've already molted a few times and then we're going to have to size them up into something larger, of course. But uh, as you can see here, what I have is a nice moist soily mix here that contains some dwarf white isopods. You can kind of see cruising around in there. It might even prey on those, but they'll help maintain some form of cleanliness in the enclosure. So we've got some nice pieces of bark here, uh, a nice soil mix consisting of some sphagnum moss, some cypress mulch, peat moss, a little bit of black earth potting soil, and a bit of sand as well. Here we have a small water dish that contains a few hydroton balls to ensure that the animals do have access to fresh water at all times, but because of their small size, the hydroton will ensure that they never drown in there, and that's very important. So, and then again, scorpions are very shy animals and they do appreciate having hiding places, so we have nice pieces of wood here for the animals to hide under and feel safe. And then for ventilation, we're trying to maintain some humidity so there aren't any cross ventilation holes, but the lid itself has a nice open screen cut out here. So that'll be perfect. So we'll go ahead and put these guys in here and then maybe in a few days we'll try feeding them and I'll include it in an arachnid feeding video because I'm probably going to be doing tarantula feeding video soon and throw them into the mix if they decide to eat on camera. Hi little guys. There we go. There you go little buddy. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this short video. Pretty exciting to say that we now have scorpions in the reptile room. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to ding the notification bell so that you know exactly when I post another video. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Lots of cool videos coming soon. So there you go, there you have it. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment down below. Thanks very much for watching guys. See you next time. How you doing? How you doing?